At least he's not wearing a pantsuit. Let, let's give it a plus. Now, if he came out in a pink pantsuit, I would say he has a better chance of a crossover vote. <laughs> Look at the shirt the guy picks. This is a... What's that shirt, the cheapest menu? It's not even an arrow that you buy at four ninety nine in a discount in a package. Like they can't give them away. They make so many of them in China, they don't know what to do with them. The Chinese don't even wear these shirts anymore. The Chinese have moved up from this level of, of dress shirt. They're wearing a little more designer. They're wearing a five ninety nine. This guy buys them by the dozen. Every twelve years he gets another shirt. This is gonna be the president. I don't I'd leave the country. Where would I go? I don't know where I'm He makes Holland look like a, a like like De Gaulle. How in the world could you even entertain this? An inarticulate low life like this. You know what I wonder though is how come he how does he even have the energy for this? You know he's in bad health. You can take one look at him. This guy you know what this guy ate all his life? It's written all over his face. You know I mean, pot, okay. A lifetime of marijuana, bad bad red wine. Terrible food, tofu, probably enlarged breasts from the tofu. <laughs> no, I mean, think about what it does to you. The, the, uh, it's well known that the hormones in the, it, it, it's a mimic. Tofu mimics a female sex hormone. So they get enlarged breasts, men, a, week, a, lot, a lifetime of tofu. So tofu, uh, God, he's just emaciated mentally, er, physically, every which way, and they like him. Can he get a haircut? Something, the breath on this guy. Just look at him. I know I don't want to be in the, within 25 feet of him. This is Halitosisville. <laughs> don't let me get started on I know you think I'm being comedic in the political arena. Why not? What do I care? I want to go slapstick on Bernie Sanders. I want to ridicule him as much as I can. I want to tear him apart like a cat with a mouse. I'd invite him on the show anytime he wants. I had Trump on. Trump had the guts to come on the show. So more than I could say for, for Tom Cruise, or whatever his name is. I forget Tom Cruise's first name. None of, it's interesting. All these great Republicans that you love wouldn't come on the show. Think about it. Trump had the guts to come on the show. I treated him well. Why wouldn't Tom Cruise's grandfather come on the show? Whatever his name is. And that other one, the ice cream man from Miami that Larry Ellison likes because he wants to bring in cheap labor. The arrest stopped running already. There's no one else running. It's like a up. I, ben Carson I'd have on, but I would be, I'd fall asleep. As much as I like him, I go to sleep with Ben Carson on the show. What can I ask him? Well, well, there's nothing to ask Ben Carson. Speaks in a monotone. Goes on and on. Good, good, good. He'd be a good vice president of something, of, uh, of Humana. Why would... He's not made to be any, like, a politician. No, Trump is right about Carson. A good man doesn't make for a good president. You understand that. Where's the management? Where is Ben Carson's management experience? I don't understand why you're voting for him. Or this schmundrick. What has Bernie Sanders ever managed that would permit him to be a decent uh, manager of a nation? Look what we got with Obama who never managed a lemonade stand. Never worked a day in his life. He didn't even work his way through grade school. Nothing. He doesn't even understand what it is to make. He doesn't understand profit and loss. He prints money when he needs it. No consequences to his behavior. Exactly what a liberal is. No consequences to any behavior. So a schmuck like Bernie Sanders gentleman says, I'm going to work to end massive income inequality. What does that mean? Where did massive income inequality come from, you moron? What percent of the American people don't work at all, moron? What percent are our welfare who are able-bodied, moron? What percent of illegal aliens cash in the minute they get here, moron? Why should I pay another dime in taxes, moron? You want to come on the show, Bernie? I hope this gets sent to you by MP3. You're invited on the Savage Nation. Open door policy. Anytime you want to debate, Bernie. Anytime, Bernie, we'll reach out to your people. I could just imagine what his staff looks like. Could you imagine? A guy as sick as this, what he'd have to like hire. Okay, no white males, that's number one. It would look like a bad uh, photograph of University of California equality parade. So, yeah, gives a speech on the color of the skin, income inequality. Oh, there's Obama. I missed that. He's still talking, too. College expense. Okay, let's hear clip 10 of the original retrovirus. The country with the best educated workforce in the world is going to win the 21st century economy. Let's stop right there. Wait, that so that's America. why you're bringing in people who don't even have a first grade education from Mexico. That makes sense. 
best educated workforce in the world is going to win the 21st century economy. So keep in bringing people who can't even write in Spanish. They can't read in Spanish or write in Spanish, many of these illegals. You do know that's a fact. It's an embarrassing one, I recognize. They are illiterate in Spanish. Oh, they can speak it, but they're illiterate. Why would you bring them in? So now he's pushing free college. Okay, again, socialism, everything free. I would have liked college, too, for nothing. I, I wanted to go to college for nothing. I had to work. It didn't hurt me. It, may, it made me stronger, by the way. I didn't like working till midnight or three jobs, but I, I became a stronger person. It made me smarter, faster, quicker. Let me give you an example. All of you don't, don't even know natural selection, what it is. I have a little tomato garden next to one of my houses. You can learn a lot from a garden. In this garden, I've got to be careful. I'm falling into this Bernie Sanders thing. Either this is going to cure me or kill me of my New York accent. I better be very cautious. I may not do any more imitations. This could be, this could be the death knell. I have a garden, a garden on the side of my house here where I grow tomatoes. They're planted in late February. They've all come in bloom. There's a few left. They're a little green. They're green ready into September. I never had them run them. Ooh, must be global tomato or something. But they're still growing. Normally, they're gone by August. Go explain why they're still here. It was such global warming. They would have ripened already in July. Anyway, they're still here, and, and they're still there. In the garden, I planted an aloe vera plant last winter, two winters ago, three. It never took off, sort of in the back. It didn't like it there. It was I don't know what it was. It wasn't growing. No matter what I did, it wouldn't grow. Just didn't like it. I don't know. Like it's like it looked like it was going to die on me. And I I use aloe for a burn or a cut because aloe vera sap is one of the best immediate cures for a burn you could ever imagine. It's been used since Cleopatra's time to treat burns. You don't know that Johnson and Johnson doesn't want you to know that. They want you to buy a salve. But this stuff is amazing. Not only healing, but it's. Anesthetic, too. It's amazing. So I keep it around my house, get a burn or a scald. Say so I did a burn, he scald. I got to be careful. I gotta just, you rub it on. So I planted this three years ago, wouldn't grow, wouldn't take off. It's like it was hanging in there, just hanging on, hanging on. So now the garden has planted tomatoes last year, last fe this year, February, March. And the tomatoes, of course, grow like Jack and the Beanstalk in front and around the aloe. And then behind the aloe comes up an herb I planted years ago, grew up out of the soil again. I think it was basil. So he's smothering it. Everything smothered every ounce of light out of that aloe. It's three times bigger than it was before the tomatoes were planted. I was observing this as it was going on over the last few months, that as the tomatoes engulfed the aloe and competed with it, the aloe vera plant got bigger. Why? It's called competition, Bernie. You moron, you. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We now turn to the very provincial San Francisco opera uh, ball, the gala ball of last night. And uh, the San Francisco newspaper, most intriguing fashion at the 2015 Opera Bowl. There's some skanky blonde there. I'm not sorry. I won't read, read her name. Wears a dark floral gown by Oscar de la Yenta. Didn't he die 30 years ago? Who wears Oscar de la Renta? Betsy Ford wears Oscar de la Renta. What, what is this? It looks like a drape. I mean, look at the dress on this woman. They go to these things. That, what, what drugs are they on in San Francisco? They're so out of town. Look at this one. On the steps. Another one looks like she ripped the drape off a movie wall. Opera Guild president, I can't read her name, poses for a portrait in her floral Carolina Herrera gown. Looks like, I swear to you, it looks like she just was naked. Somebody stole her clothing and she grabbed a drape off. <laughs> the Lois Valencia. What's this now? Bad jewelry? President Charlotte wears a bracelet by Rosalina and carries a Bottega Veneta clutch. Don't you know they're all for the poor, by the way? These are all against inco income inequality. They're wearing like 50 carat rings. And of course, the article's just glowing in this out of town. So there's Willie Brown probably preening after getting the guy off from the, the million dollar wife beating case. The tapes disappeared. The woman wouldn't testify. Here's another one. Look at that. Gown by Oscar de la Renta again. Is this guy still alive? This one looks like Bert. 
He died last year. So what are they wearing his gowns for? Looks like bird droppings on a on a on a black tarp. Look at this one now. Where's an Oscar de la Renta? Another one. These are like rental gowns. It's like reverse pregnancy in this gown. The wrong part of her body is bulging. Don't these women know what they're going to be laughed at? Oscar de la Renta, clutch, clutch, clutch. Nice fingernails, very nice. I wonder if they did her nails for her. Hand all marked. Another one, the floral is in. I don't like floral. I've always hated floral outfits. Look at this jerk. Men who pose for society pages are the biggest jerks on earth. Dinner jacket by Brioni. That's like an off the rack. The thing looks like he's going to return it the next day with the tags inside of it. A, the sleeves are too long. B, it's too short uh, on his hips. My grandfather was a tailor. C, it's too tight around his middle. Looks like a, like a shrimp jacket on him. Looks like a waiter they got in from the back of the Opera Plaza from, from Max's old, Mac, old Max's Deli. Look at this outfit. I'm going to entertain myself. Oh, look, another floral. Who told these idiots that floral is in? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Where did this idea come from? Floral gowns are in. I, welcome back to the Savage Nation. And these are the biggest phonies on the planet, mind you, in San Francisco. Every one of them espouses income inequality and the poor and bringing the immigrants. They're wearing like 50 carat rings. Expensive but ugly gowns. No taste whatsoever. They could feed an entire immigrant family just from the clutch they're holding in their hand. But where'd the, the, the floral come from? Is there anyone listening to the show who's into fashion? This is the most out-of-town big city in the, in, the, in the world. It is so much like the gold rush. Well, yes, we have an opera here, too, just like them back there, back east. Yes, we managed to put on quite a show out here. It's so unbelievable. I'm jealous. I could go. I could pay enough money to stand around with these fools. Take a look at them. Would you want your son to marry one of them? Take a look at them. You want your son to be in with that one, with one of these? <sighs> look at these outfits. What dignity my mother had, my aunts, compared to these witches. Look at this. I get, you know what's getting to me is the corruption of the city. It's starting to eat me alive. I know it was bad. But it, was one, it wasn't until I read the story uh, over the weekend about well, Willie Brown, how he got that guy off. I couldn't believe that story. You saw that story today in the local paper? You didn't make it? Mateer and Ross, why Willie Brown took on a high-profile domestic violence case. Here is a guy, digital ad entrepreneur, Gurbach Shalal. Beats 45 felony domestic violence charges in San Francisco after he allegedly punched his girlfriend a hundred times over half an hour in his Rincon Hill penthouse. Wait a minute. All recorded by in-home security cameras. So they go and get Willie Brown, the greatest lawyer in the world since he knows all the judges. He wants a million dollars down, right? And they say, well, why would you give him a million dollars? So when you, Willie Brown, they say he's a very good deal broker. Just met him, wants $1 million if he can make this go away. Just gave him a $250,000 retainer. So what happens next is astonishing. He goes ahead and he, he gets the videotapes of the beating of the woman thrown out. Thrown out. The security camera video, defense says, uh, was illegally seized by San Francisco police without a warrant. You hear this? So they threw the tape out. And then the, the uh, girlfriend, the ex-girlfriend, is so scared to death, she won't testify. This guy. So the judge, so-called the judge, came out. San Francisco, you know what a judge is, don't you? Puts him on three years probation and requires that he attend a domestic violence training class and perform community service. <laughs> the lawyer, Patty Glazer, told the journal that Willie Brown had nothing to do with the outcome of the case. <laughs> Glazer Wild. Another Sterling group. Why would a former mayor get involved with such a sordid case? Well, I, I don't think it has anything to do with the money. If it's Willie Brown, it wouldn't have anything to do with the money. It's because the poor man was picked on. That the, the woman picked on him. Now, now you go to the opera. There's Willie Brown in the black suit, the tuxedo, women with the clutches. The lowest, the lowest of San Francisco society is there wearing their outfits that you can't believe. They'd be laughed out of New York. Look at these outfits. Oh, here's one wearing a gown of her own design. You know that the tag is on the inside of that dress. That went back the next morning. 
the Gumps. Is Gumps still in business? I used to buy 